ET TV 16. He's one of the offensive linemen. Didn't like the look of the defense. One play, guys. One play. We've seen the War Dogs hold in a lot of situations, and I don't think any situation has been any bigger than what they could do right now in front of their home crowd and on the last game of the season. And Columbus, remember that they will get the ball to start the second half. So this is a huge turn of events here. Five seconds to play. Columbus trailing by seven here in the first half. Misha Porter's in there as one of the linebackers, along with DeMarco Johnson. The defensive line, one of the big boys up front, John Craddock, David Bernard, and Darren Damron. Here comes Mastroli bringing his team to the line. To the near side, that is Terrell Sutton right along the boards. The fullback is Lane. The other wide receivers are Dixon and Magic. They're going to float it up. Mastroli for the corner of the end zone. He's got it. Anthony Dixon in the corner of the end zone. And that is the way the first half will end. How many times have we seen it, DJ, that the opposing team comes down in the last 30 seconds of the half and is able to score on the War Dogs, and they lead now by a chance at two touchdowns if Cornblue can put together the extra point. We've seen that one too many times, and I tell you, this is a, this is a team coming in, we said before, and that's the fourth touchdown this half that Mastroli has connected on. We got to slow him down in the second half. Cornblue's extra point attempt just sneaks inside the left hand hash mark and that, or the left hand upright, and that will be the end of the first half as Florida goes down with a big score in the last 30 seconds to make it 35 to 21. We will take our first break and have halftime activities coming up. You're listening to the War Dogs on Boomer 95.3. Karen's Cuts is headquarters for great hair care for the entire family. Located at 9468 Lee Road 240, next door to the new fire station. All walk-ins welcome, no appointment necessary. Open Tuesday through Friday 9 to 6 and Saturday 9 to 1. Karen's Cuts, a family tradition. Goo Goo Car Wash, your one-stop shop for all your car care needs. Start with a gasoline fill-up with quality coastal gasoline products. Next, pull in for a 10-minute oil change and 10-point vehicle inspection. Goo Goo features quality Pennzoil products. And don't forget to pamper your car with a discounted all-cloth car wash with the purchase of an oil change. Goo Goo Car Wash is fast, car-friendly, and conveniently located at 3101 Mercury Drive. With over 25 years of satisfied customers, let the Goo Goo Car Wash Goo Goo you. And now the toughest leg of the strongman competition, Norm, the Bud Light Industrial Fridge Pole. Jim, that's 1,000 pounds of pure hernia that they'll try to drag across. I'm sorry to interrupt, Norm, but it looks like a fan from the stands has stolen the Bud Light. Oh, a huge hit from out of nowhere. And this guy's got the foot speed to take this thing all the way. Oh, man. Coming, bro. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Okay, who's the hero? Make it a Bud Light. At the Tidwell Cancer Treatment Center, we are offering patients every reason for hope. Offering hope with unique treatment plans based on each patient's unique circumstances. Offering hope with the most advanced technology and techniques available. Offering hope with caring professionals, including Dr. Jack Tidwell, the only MD Anderson trained oncologist in the area. The Tidwell Cancer Treatment Center, with every reason for hope. Open 6.30 a.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and Sunday 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. Ruth Ann's Family Restaurant has served up delicious home-cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner to locals and national celebrities since 1955. All your favorite foods prepared fresh daily. Ruth Ann's Family Restaurant. Well, it's halftime here at the Columbus Civic Center. Columbus trailing Florida by a couple of scores. Justin Kazana and DJ Jones. And DJ, it's been the story of the year, Columbus giving up a touchdown late in the waning seconds of the first half. It has been, but uh, Columbus has to step up or really make something happen in the second half. I know that uh, Coach Forcade and his staff were going to really try to instill that into the troops in the locker room, but they have to come out with a lot more spirit and a lot more passion in the second half. A lot of big plays by the quarterback for Columbus, Sherrard Poteet, really carrying this team in the first half, along with a lot of help from Terrence Samuel. He has carried the team, but we have to stop Mastroli. Five touchdowns in the first half. That's huge, and uh, we have to put a stop on him some kind of way. We will see how Columbus can handle the final 30 minutes of the season. It's Columbus in Florida when we come back. 
Phoenix Food Service has a complete line of frozen vegetables and the best selection of meats including pork chops, spare ribs, smoked sausage, beef, Angus, and special cut meats. Open Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Phoenix Food Service. Dreaming of new ideas to make your home more beautiful and unique? A water pond, waterfall, rock fireplace, landscaping with extraordinary gardens? Dirty Work specializes in all you'll need. We have the largest inventory in the area of natural stones and rocks, along with sands, mulches, and gravels. From buckets to truckloads, Dirty Works delivers to homeowners, landscapers, builders, and developers. See Jerry or Miss Faye, the rock lady. 5200 Hamilton Road, Columbus. Ugh, you're a naughty little boy, aren't you? Keep it up, and I'm gonna give you a spanking. I'll teach you the meaning of respect. You're not getting any of my butt legs. Do you hear me? No kisses for you. Not till you learn to obey me. Now, get down on all fours. <laughs> for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Since 1977, Energy Savers has provided top-notch maintenance and quality installations. But don't take our word for it. Listen to our customers. We appreciated your swift and conscientious response. They took meticulous care with our home. I was impressed by your technician's knowledge and strong work ethic. We love our new energy-saving carrier and the same as cash financing. See for yourself. Get a carrier now and make no payments until next year at Energy Savers. Mike Scott and James Dickerson. So Brandon Cornblue will kick things off. The big lead-footed kicker out of the University of Michigan has been deadly today. He's connected on five straight extra points. And he's also done a good job on kickoffs, affecting those extra uh, those uh, return yards. Here's a low-line drive taken by Washington. He'll bring it up to the 5, 10, looking for the 15, scampering around 17-yard line before getting his, not, his block knocked off by Anthony Dixon. Dixon came in with a big, looks like a forearm shiver straight to the mouth of Desmond Washington. But hey, at least that was a return. Columbus goes from one total return yard to 17. Columbus will start first down and 10 from the 16-yard line. Poteet will come out. New formation, new wide receivers. Go Kanishi is out there along with Terrence Samuel and Reggie Jones. Kanishi played one play in the first half. Of course, he is the Japanese-born receiver wearing number 34, playing in his very first game. Jones, the man in motion. Poteet, pump fake. Plenty of time. Now he's rolling out to the far side. Running for his life up to the 15. Gets his neck jerked on up to the 20. Somehow gets away from two would-be tacklers, Thaddeus Bullard and Anthony Dixon. It was Dixon that grabbed hold of the collar, and that slowed him down enough. But it's a good pickup of seven or eight yards for Sherrod Poteet. Not only is Poteet a very, very agile quarterback, he's a strong quarterback as well, as you saw him break the tackle there. But this young man obviously didn't gain 1,000 yards in arena football by just being a quick guy. He had to be tough, and obviously he had to stay healthy in order to gain that many yards. There is Go Kanishi, the man who's been with Columbus all year long, been a practice player, now getting his chance to shine. Trips to the near side. Poteet's got it. Now Kanishi got it for the first down play as Poteet finds him on a six-yard gain. And the big man from Japan is able to put his stats on the board for the Columbus War Dogs. Go Kanishi has just made history, of course, being the first Columbus War Dog player, that, uh, that Japanese player, that is, of course. And I know that all the folks back over at, at home where he's from are going to be excited to hear that uh, he actually got an opportunity to dress out and play and catch a football in an AF2 game. Of course, this game being carried live all over Tokyo. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Just oh, to the yeah, far going. side. Poteen, they'll hand it off. Desmond or uh, DeMarco Johnson's got it. About a three-yard gain up to the 20-yard line. They stacked everybody to the far side and ran the opposite way. You know, if his name was Hideki Matsui or Hideo <laughs> Nomo, yeah. it'd be live. And they'd be in a lot of pain because they're baseball players. But you got to admire the young man. He has been yep. here all year long. And uh, you know, talk about a young man, uh, Go Kanishi, who is married. He works for IBM. Uh, his company has uh, taken some time, of course, to uh, let him come over and pursue a dream. And he has given us 
you know, even more than what we, we imagine. He, he's at practice every day, very prompt, and uh, just not a problem at all. And the whistle will be blown by the head official, Pat Miles. And they'll reset the clocks. Twelve and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Columbus trailing by 14. They'd love to cut into that on this drive. Second down and seven from the 20-yard line of Florida. Trips to the far side for Poteet. That's Poteet's right. Five-step drop with time. Looking, firing over the middle. Almost intercepts it. Oh, intercepted. Check that. By Anthony Dixon and a late flag coming down as Reggie Jones was ridden into the boards by Terrell Sutton. But, oh, Anthony Dixon stuck out that big left hand and about picked off the second pass of the game. I'm glad that he didn't pull that one down because... Boy, we would be in trouble here if they were able to stop this drive. This penalty most likely holding or pass interference against Sutton. That's the way Reggie Jones is pointing. Florida is arguing that the ball was tipped. Of course, it wasn't tipped at the line. They'll call it a legal defense. Linebacker out of the box. So 12-14, clock stopped here in the second quarter. Columbus trying to drive down the field on the first down play as the ball goes all the way down to the six. A big penalty against Florida. Poteet again will work with trips to his right. We've seen that, seen that at least three times on this drive. Jones, Samuel, and Kanishi. Kanishi is the wide out. And Samuel will be coming toward the line as the man in motion. Here's the snap. Poteet three-step drop. Pump fake looking over. Tipped at the line. Kanishi's got it at the four. For he is hit hard. Quincy Sorrell laying the wood to him. But the man from Japan hangs on to it again. Another completion. And it's second down. Goal to go from the four. Tell you, you know, that uh, took uh, a lot of guts there to hang in there, and he stayed right with it, caught the ball knowing that he was going to be delivered the blow. But Go Kanishi uh, just doing what he's been doing every day of every practice since he's been here. That was just a three-yard stop route, and they completed the pass. So the ball will be at the four. Jones now will be the lone man to the short side. Now will be the man in motion joining Samuel and Kanishi. Play action fakes. Poteet running around. Poteet yanked down from behind. And all the strength of Thaddeus Bullard, Poteet thought he had the speed to get away from the six foot four, 225 pound defensive end. But oh, he grabbed him by the collar and yanked him down. That was serious power for the sack. That was serious power. And again, uh, you know, the thing about it is that uh, our quarterback just jumped right up. Again, that shows the toughness of Sherrod Poteet. And uh, he'll line up and get another shot at it. But Columbus loses seven yards on the play, as that is the 24th sack of the year for the Florida Firecats, seventh best in arena football. Now it's third down and goal from the 12. Samuel is the man in motion, working over to the trip side. Offsides is Florida. They will continue the play. Poteet's looking to the end zone. Poteet's got his man. Terrence Samuel in the end zone. Touchdown, Columbus. That's that name again, Terrence Samuels, number 17. And again, I think the flag's going to be against Florida, so the I touchdown agree. will stand. I believe Florida was offsides, but it was Samuel coming all the way across the field, catching the ball about two yards shy of the far side boards, and then running headlong into the pads for the touchdown. That's his third of the game. So Terrence Samuel gets the score, and Ty Dollinger will try and make it a seven-point affair. A great catch for Samuel, who's well on his way to being our offensive player of the game. You said that correct. The snap is good. The hold by Valencia is good. The extra point is good, and Ty Dollinger hasn't missed an extra point tonight. And with 10-18 remaining in the third quarter, it is Florida 35 and Columbus 28. You're listening to the War Dogs on Boomer 95.3.
10-18 remaining in the third quarter. Columbus trailing by seven here at the final War Dogs game of the year as they are having a lot of fun here. <laughs> Darren Damron just tackled a four-year-old. <laughs> but it was planned. It was part of the stunt. It's all right. Boy. All kinds of fun here at War Dogs games. The tell biggest you. crowd of the year I saw. Yeah, 4,700, over 4,700 in here. And tell you what, man, you know, you, it's just unbelievable that this is the last game of the year. Wow. Wish we had at least four or five more. I tell you what. You know, it's kind of like in golf. You always hit your best shots the last That's four right. round. That's just right. Just brings you back for more. So Columbus set to kick off with Ty Dollinger kicking from right to left. The kick is high. will be taken off the net, off the bottom of the net by, uh, I believe, Magic Benton right along his own board. It was knocked off the iron, and now Magic Benton's get room at the 15, the 20, the 25, up to the 20, flag down as he's headed down. Fumble now at the five-yard line. Magic Benton was taunting the other players, and he didn't see a Columbus War Dog sneak up from behind him. He lost the football. Columbus recovered on their own one-yard line. The momentum has just turned for the War Dogs, and it was Darius Ellison getting a bit of revenge for that tough first half he had. And oh, what a moment! And couldn't happen to a better man. Magic Benton, flag is down against Florida. That is the hold against Florida. That will be declined, and Columbus will have the ball on their own two yard line. That was probably one of the biggest special team plays of the year, and of course. Darius Ellison using that speed and finally getting an opportunity to make something happen. Very smart play, knocking the ball loose there from Magic Benton on an excellent return. And now Columbus gets a stop on the special teams and has the opportunity to drive 48 yards to tie this ball game up. Magic Benton was running down the field, almost taunting Ellison, and somehow the little man snuck up and knocked the ball away. You know, as a graduate of Miami, he should know better after what happened to them at Alabama. Absolutely. At the Sugar Bowl. Absolutely. So Poteet will start things off from his own two. Porter will be the man in motion. Poteet, two step drop, looking over, got his man. That is Porter at the 10 yard line, a gain of eight as he falls down. Bullard on the tackle. You know, tracing back or going back to that uh, kickoff return and fumble. Believe it or not, Darius Ellison was the first guy down on the coverage unit and then made the play, made up. you know, Man. 40 yards back the other way. So he ran about, a, all, not, not quite 100 yards, but he ran every bit of 90 yards on that play. Inside of nine minutes, clock rolling, the ball on the 10, straddling the uh, yardage marker. Two wide receivers to the near side. That is Porter and Reggie Jones. Far side, that's Joe Valencia. Poteet scrambling around. Now he's going to go up top looking for Porter. He's got it at the five. He's headed down to the one-yard line before being pushed out of bounds by Carlos McLaren. Now the question is, who ended up with the football? McLaren's got the ball. What's the question? They'll bring back the markers as there's a flag back at the two. What is the call as one official is standing over the football at the two and another's there to talk about it, but it doesn't matter because the penalty is against Columbus. Tell you what, these War Dogs are giving these four, over 4,700 fans quite a treat here at this last game of the season in this last half of a football game for 2003. The hold goes against David Bernard. Oh, what a tough penalty because, honestly, I think that was the best pass that Poteet's thrown all night. And a great catch by Misha yes. Porter. It's not a hold. It's actually called a face mask against Bernard. And Oh, what a tough time as the ball goes back to the five. It'll be second down, and John Forcade is not up very happy. I think it was because the down marker said three, and it should have been two, and then now it's corrected. So instead of Columbus having the ball on the one of Florida, they got the ball on their own five. 44-yard penalty for the most part. The War Dogs could definitely make a statement with this drive. Trips to Poteet's left. 
Skeins is in there as the slot man. Poteet's looking over, got Porter at the 10, trying to get away from another tackler. Gets a great block from Dennis Skeins. Comes to the middle of the field and up to the 14-yard line. And how about Dennis Skeins playing one of his first games offensively, typically an off or a defensive specialist out of Mississippi College, laying a big block and the first down for Columbus. We hadn't talked much about it, but Dennis Skeins obviously had needing to double because of the loss of uh, Adrian Cockfield, who was released, uh, of course, as a part of a trade deal that went down. And again, it's a gentleman's agreement between Skip Foster and John Forcade for futures. So now Skeens will be the man along the near boards. Porter to the far boards, and he's the man in motion. Poteet bobbling around as he makes his drop back. He's got Skeens at the 20, up to the 25-yard line. Where has the little man been? He belongs on the offensive side. He's got a catch, he's got a block, and now Columbus has got a first down into territory of Florida. The last time we've had a little explosive guy like that around here, he wore the number one, and he went by the name of Matt Burstein. Dennis Gaines wow, stepping that's up. that's a name to bring back. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right, though. Seven minutes and six seconds remaining in the third quarter. Columbus trailing by a score, but they can tie it up with a drive here. Reggie Jones in the game to the near side. Now he'll swing around as the man in motion, joining Skeens and Porter toward Poteet's right. Poteet, plenty of time, firing over the middle, intercepted by Cameron Lane. He's got it, Lamb's got it up to the 20, 15, and down into Columbus territory to the 13-yard line. And there was no one around Kanan Lamb and that time, Poteet made a mistake. Second interception of the game, and that nullifies any momentum that Columbus had. Well, again, I have to mention the fact that uh, this Florida Firecat defense has the number, uh, ranked number one as far as turnover margin. And again, uh, the second interception on the night, Columbus not able to capitalize on their fumble recovery. And again, they rank uh, 27th in the league as far as turnover ratio. And again, Florida has come back to put themselves in a good position. Florida's turned the ball over once, all, or, uh, Columbus twice. Now, coming into the game, Mastroli firing over, got Terrell Sutton. No, they say he dropped it. They had him on a bit, on a quick five yard stop route to the eight yard line, but he one hopped it. Second down. The defense, oh, put again into the short field. Starting at the 14-yard line, and they need a stop. The DBs are Ellison, Washington, and Skeins. The linebackers, Porter and Lucas. The line looks like, I believe that is Tillman, along with Craddock and Carmack. Coming in motion is Lamb. Mastroli under center, five-step drop, got plenty of time. Looking over, has his man Sutton at the 10, up to the five. He'll get away from three different Columbus tacklers and spin his way into the end zone. And again, Florida has a chance to go up by two scores. Poor job of tackling, and we, uh, we hadn't talked enough about that job of tackling. Now, again, Columbus just not wrapping up, not hitting low. You know, everybody just reaching and grabbing. And, a small guy. Now, this is not a big brute. This is a small guy in terms of uh, the, compared to fullback linebackers. Sutton gets in the end zone. Brandon Cornblue is trying to make it a 14-point game. Snap a bit off, but the hold is down. The kick is off. Cornblue misses for the first time tonight. That is a rarity as he is now 73 of 89 on the year. So we'll take a break. Columbus trails by 13. You're listening to the War Dogs on Boomer 95.3. You know what? You don't just continue to kick the ball right down the middle every time, perfectly between the uprights and uh, not give this team an opportunity to, to score. I, I got to think that whenever he wants to do that, he can do it. That's why he was a Division I kicker, playing in Ann Arbor in Michigan. First down and 10 to go from the five-yard line of Columbus. John Forcade's squad, they put up 28 points so far, four times as many as they scored the first time against Florida. That's good news. 
But they're only down 13 with almost 20 minutes to play. Four minutes and 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Poteet, five-step drop, fires over. Got his man, Reggie Jones, at the 12-yard line before being... Seven on the play as Jones came across the field in front of Roy Stabler to make the catch. Stabler credited with the tackle, a gain of seven. This Columbus War Dog offense, obviously, uh, you know, just like the defense had, had to make a stand, this, this offense needs to get points on the board now. They can't afford not to score a touchdown this drive. Samuels to the near side. Jones is the man in motion right next to him. Skeins to the far side. Poteet five-step drop, running for his life. Jumps up in the air and floats it into the seats. Nice catch by a fan before it went into the bench. But Poteet was running for his life from the get-go that time. Tell you what, Sherrod Poteet can take a play that looks like nothing and make it look like, I mean, that play was just a, you know, incomplete pass, but he was all over the place, running around, jumping up and down, and lopped it up into the uh, third or fourth deck, or third or fourth row. So third down, and call it a long three. The ball's at the 17, they got to get, or check that, the ball's at the 13, 12. One of these days I'll get my numbers. <laughs> get back to remedial math. They got to get to the 15. Swinging around is Samuel as the man in motion. Florida about jump. No flag on the play. Valencia's got it at the 16-yard line as he goes leaping above Terrence Sorrell to make the catch and to get the first down. Nice play for Columbus to get the first down. Roy Stabler making jabs at his old teammate, that Joe Valencia, knowing that, you know, Joe has those hands, man. He's got great hands, and he went up and caught that ball just the way you have to do it. The six foot, 190 pound wide receiver, out of, wide receiver out of Louisiana Lafayette. Credited with the catch, his second of the night. He's up to the 16 yard line. That's where Columbus will start things off. And first down and 10, 222 remaining. Trips to the far side. That's Poteet's right. Poteet stumbling out of the blocks again, but plenty of time. He's going up top. He's got his man. Terrence Samuel at the five. Samuel into the end zone. Touchdown, Columbus. Terrence Samuels is on fire. It was a 34-yard streak route by Terrence Samuel to score his fourth touchdown of the game and to get Columbus within a score. You got to love what that young man brings to the game. And again, he is just one of those game breakers that we said earlier. He is a guy that can take it the distance on any play. 41 to 34 the score, and now the PAT that was missed by Cornblue is so big if Ty Dollinger can put it through. Snap good, hold good, kick, no good. So all of a sudden, Dollinger and Cornblue have gone cold. Back-to-back -back missed PATs, and again, the score will stay at a seven-point game. With 128 remaining in the third quarter, it is Columbus trailing by seven. You're listening to the War Dogs on Boomer 95.3. Well, John Forcade and Bubba Diggs, the two big coaches on the far boards, trying to motivate their team to get back into this game. Ty Dollinger kicking it high and long. Looking down there is Lamb. Lamb's got it in his goal line. He's coming up to the five, got a little room at the 10, up to the 15, to the 20. Two men to beat. He gets down to the 23-yard line, and it came down to just one last tackle. And I believe Clarence Tillman wrapping up on the play right along the 24-yard line, but it's coming back, a hanky back at the seven. Boy, I tell you, I was holding my breath once again because we have time in and time out not been very good covering kicks. Illegal block against Camone Fisher, second-year man out of Ole Miss. So instead of the ball being at midfield, the ball will be at the four. Now. This is what we want to see. We want to give this opportunity, give this War Dogs defense an opportunity to defend the, the field at least 45 yards or better and not have to defend the short field with 15 or, or 10 yards because of a long kickoff return. Mastroli's got three wide receivers. Lamb is his slot man. Anthony Dixon will be the man in motion, and Magic Benton to the far side. He's looking for Benton on a fly route. Benton against Ellison had a step but Ellison was able to make it up. It was overthrown either way. They were looking for the streak the whole way, just overthrew it by a hair. And like I said before, you know, Darius Ellison is the guy that they have chose to go after. He's got the bullseye on his chest, but you know what? He was up to the task, and he's got to continue to do that. And then 
to top it off. He needs to take an interception, take, get a takeaway here and there that, to get him off of him. They start the play clock with 20 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. It will be interested to see if Florida is going to take one more snap. And no, they will not as the clock ticks down 10, 9, Eight. That will be the end of the third quarter, the final 15 minutes of the season for the Columbus War Dogs, and how will they handle it against the